So yesterday was our Unity in Pride fundraiser. And I wanted to take a moment to do two things. First, to thank everyone who showed up and made this such a success. I can't even begin to express my gratitude. And secondly, to show you guys some highlights of the event. The first video is just a little bit of the setup, which was... Uh, a pretty long process. We started working pretty early to try to get everything how it needed to be, get food moved in. And I have to thank our volunteers in the setup process, which um, included locally uh, our good friend Bonnie, my campaign manager Chrissy, and our grassroots organizer Heather, who put a lot of work into all this, as you can see. So thank you for everyone who supported us. You know, I know it's the last day of this Pride Month. That's probably why you're a little quiet, because if you've been like me, you've been across the state and, you know, gays can wear you out sometimes. So <laughs> a little celebrating, a little too much celebrating, but it has been a very good month for um, our community and celebrating things. But it's also been a month of recognizing that Pride was a riot. Yes. Pride was a moment of... Uh, political uh, speak, political talk, political change, and that was the reason behind that. Uh, but I'm just really excited to be here to support you. I mean, this is, this is, um, I, there was a few times when I first heard of your candidacy, um, it was probably last fall, and then I knew we were both going to be in Washington for the um, LGBT Victory Fund uh, conference yeah. that they had, and we didn't get a chance to connect then, but um, I just followed your leadership and followed the advocacy and the work that you've been doing, not only just for your campaign, but as you're mentioning, the organizing and the uh, bringing of people together, the relationship bringing is so vital and so important. So thank you for your leadership and thank you for stepping up and doing what you're doing. Let's give Aria another round. You have a beautiful community. You know, I talked with my colleagues uh, uh, Hannah and Eli, when we were driving up here, I was like, you know what? I remember having a pontoon boat when I was growing up. We had Buckeye Lake uh, with the lake that we grew up here, but it was like, you know, I may be black, I may be gay, but I like fishing. You know, I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy being in my pool out of going fishing. So uh, but we had some good times. So it brought back some memories. And I know the chair said she lives here on the lake, but she didn't have a boat. But, um, you know, I enjoy uh, getting out on the pontoon and getting a Johnsonville bra. Yeah. So that's me. See a room of people that are passionate Democrats that care about our shared values of decency, of equality, and ensuring everyone in our community feels heard. Uplifted. It, it means a lot in a community like this to see such an impactful room of people that care about it. Now, someone like Ari stepping up in a community like this and running as brave. I mean, we've seen the hate filled attacks time after time in the state. Just recently, with the extra session that the State House did, where they came, we're working on budget, we're working on special projects to help our community. And then the Republicans came in sneakily on a bill that was about college credit. It was about making sure kids could go to college. And they put provisions into that bill that made it where any kid or any adult that is trans would be banned from using the restroom that they most identify with in schools and in colleges. It's clear they have no intention of stopping scapegoating and pushing the community that's already very ignored in the state. Let's be honest about it. There's not many protections for the LGBTQ community right now. Having voices like Ari's in the state house is instrumental to ensuring that our values and our community is represented and heard. Now, as, as Ari mentioned, I did run for office this year, and I can tell you that just a little taste of what she's going through now, it's hard work. And it can be really alienating sometimes to be out there, putting yourself out there on display when everyone's looking at you, everyone's seeing every little thing you say and do. And I just think we should give her a round of applause and applaud for stepping up. <laughs> now, she can't do it alone, obviously. And that's what all of you are here for today. You're here to support her. 
and the importance of Hurricane Tennessee. And whether that means you go out and help her knock doors this year, whether that means you scan this QR code and make a donation today, whatever that might be, that's what's going to get her across the line. That's what it's going to get Sharon Brown across the line. That's what's going to get Joe Biden across the line. I mean, let's be real. This year, this is going to be about electing everyone from the president down to our local offices. Because the Republicans, they're pretty good at this. They know how to run people for every damn seat, and they know how to engage on every little election down to your city council and put their right-wing extremists in. And it's time we stand up and fight back against that. So thank you so much for being here, and I'm honored to be here. Sometimes, and I've said this before, it's the little things that make the big things. And we forget that it is all of us here that are making the big thing. And you know, I know I'm preaching to the choir. Because we are here because we support Ari. But why do we support her? Why is it that we're here saying, you know what, you got our vote and you got our support and we're going to talk to people? What makes someone decide to put themselves out there knowing that the kickback and sometimes the cruelty and the danger is present? And you put yourself out there to run and you're not like everybody else. What is it? Why, why do you think Ari's doing it? Why do any of us do it? Is it fearlessness? Is it our past experiences? Is it our upbringing? Is it our character? So I'm gonna tell a little story. Um, I'm gonna try not to cry. So when my dad came here to Berkshire County, he was, uh, I think he was in the sixth grade. The first day of school, was ready and he had money in his pocket for lunch. So, but the first day of school, for whatever reasons, the cafeteria was not open. So he had no food. He had no lunch. And <laughs> 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 so he had no lunch. So he sat down. And this guy came, another kid came to him and said, You have lunch? Do you have lunch? And he goes, no, I, I got money for lunch. I thought the cafeteria would be open, but it wasn't open. He goes, I, I, I do have lunch. I'm going to share my lunch with you. Here's another kid. He didn't know my dad. My dad had brown skin. He didn't worry about the color of his skin. All he knew is that there was someone in need who was hungry, and he fed them. He didn't turn away. He didn't walk the other way. He did not go sit with his other friends, he sat with my dad. When my mom passed, the very first person to come through that line was him, the guy that shared his lunch with my dad. You know why? Because it was the right thing to do. I want you to know, Ari is doing the right thing. She's not turning her head to ignore people in need, health care, the elderly, school children in public education, municipalities that need funding for fire, for police, for infrastructure. She's not turning her head. She's not ignoring the bills that need to be paid attention to. She will not ignore them. But she's looking at them, she's facing them. She's being like that kid at lunch, sharing her lunch with my dad. She is sharing her desire to help people. Because if you look like you said, in, in Columbus right now, who are they helping? Who are they being there for? I can tell you what, I know Ari enough to know she's going to be there for you. And that's when you go out and you talk about Ari's campaign, that's the message. 
Why are you worried about what bathroom she uses? Aren't you more worried about her character? Aren't you more worried about whether she's going to help you if you need help? Aren't you worried about that? Aren't you worried about your children? Aren't you worried about your community safety? Because I tell you what, she is. She's worried about that. To her, what is important, no matter what you look like, what you religious believe, is that you are a human being that has the right to live a life that you deserve to live. And that is why Ari is the best candidate for the House District 84. Standing up there yesterday on the courthouse step, as we saw the people, like I got there and then I got to see the train of people continuing to fill in. And I'll tell you, when you see all that we went through over especially the last couple of years with the hate that's really been inflamed, what you saw yesterday when you were looking out there, for all the solutions in our community, or all the problems in our community, there were the solutions marching up. And that is exactly how we fix things, by bringing people together. So I just... talk a little bit and share a little bit of the path that's kind of led me um, to this point. I've been here in Ohio for a little over a decade now. Uh, most of you know I came from the hills of southwest Virginia. I am the daughter, granddaughter, and great-granddaughter of coal miners. And, you know, we grew up in poverty, we grew up in a very uh, conservative, restrictive, right-wing environment. A place where the first thing I learned really was not in hating other people. The first thing I learned was in hating myself. And that hate continued on for 34 years. 34 years, people that meant the world to me their lives came to an end, never having the opportunity to actually get to know me as me, only getting to know what I felt I had to present. I came to Ohio, and a big part of that was to get away from the people I knew and have an opportunity to, frankly, discover myself in a way that I knew I wouldn't be able to do back home. And in the process of all of that, I found friends, and when I lost family, when I did come out, I found new family. Yeah. And that has meant the world to me, and the reason that I'm in this campaign right now is this community, the people that have supported me, you guys have handed me everything I could have wanted. Things are not always easy, but the great thing is when they're not easy, I have a place to turn to. But I want everybody in this community to know, every child that's growing up and felt the same pain and the same isolation that I felt in the closet, I want them to know there is somebody out there that is going to fight for them. Everybody who has struggled with poverty like I did growing up. I know what it is to get made fun of when you go to school because your family can't afford the newest clothes. I know what it is when you're wearing, uh, let's just say they're capris, but they weren't intended to be that way because it's your high water waders, because as we call them back home, because you can't afford, your family can't afford a new pair of jeans for school or the new Nikes. I want to create a better community for all of us. And at the end of the day, you know, everybody wants to be accepted. But your acceptance of me, and I know the people in this room do, but your acceptance of me is not a requirement mm -hmm. for me to work for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you like who I am, but I do care if your schools are properly funded. I do care, as we have seen in places, 
where in, in, in the state of Ohio, where they've taken over the school boards because of funding issues, because they were no longer solvent, where we've had in our own communities levies that have been put up because schools see what's happening. Their funding is shrinking away. The GOP will tell you that they increased funding, the school funding, the highest ever in the state of Ohio. And they're kind of telling you the truth on the, on the paper. They really did. The problem is, is that same budgetary line is also where your voucher program comes from. And that program has cost us over a billion dollars. Where I had someone get with me, because they couldn't get up with Angie. hey -o. <laughs> who had a housing voucher. <laughs> and the problem they had, that housing voucher was good in Dark County. Problem was, is they couldn't find a landlord that was willing to accept the housing voucher. This is someone who was struggling, trying to get up on their feet, went through the right steps to try to do that. And due to a form of discrimination, they were being refused the opportunity to get back up on their feet, which is why we need to pass a comprehensive housing reform package that includes source of in, banning source of income discrimination in our state. Because if we really want to love thy neighbor, then we have to love our neighbors regardless of how big their bank accounts are. That